It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports, where we'll see a brawl inside the AFC South. It's the Houston Texans and the Indianapolis Colts coming up next. We are pleased, as always, to be bringing you coverage of the National Football League on EA Sports. Today, it's an intra-division matchup in the AFC South, as it will be the Houston Texans taking on the Indianapolis Colts. Here's the former UCLA Bruin, Kaimi Fairbairn, to get this one started. And off we go on EA Sports. And the opening kickoff will not be returned, as that will be a touchback. So the Colts now coming out for their opening drive. Leading them out, still one of the most recognizable QBs in the game and one of the most fun QBs in his fifth season, it's Gardner Minshew. And how about this young man? Took the NFL world by storm as a six-round rookie, signature mullet, mustache, but 21 touchdowns for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Great personality, and everyone gravitates towards this guy. Teammates love to win with a quarterback who leads them like that, and fans love to root for a guy who seems just like them. They're going to get nine here on first down as he gets this one up to the 34-yard line. Someone's looking fresh, and this old line is definitely licking their chops. Everyone likes to run block if you're an offensive lineman. Nice early burst, nice gain, too. Maybe a good spot to take a shot. here, second and a yard from the 34. They run once more with Taylor. And Taylor going to pick up the Colts first down as he'll get this up past the 35-yard line. Well, that was a unit that understood exactly where the first down marker was, handed it to their guy who could run it, created some space, and he got there. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Now Minshew. And this will be swung out wide for Taylor. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. So five yards here, five on the play. And it'll be second down. Now that's the type of play gives you a chance to win. Nothing forced downfield where you don't have a guy open. Swing it out to the back on maybe even check it down, whatever you want to call it. Gain of five. You're just trying to get four on first down. They're ahead of the chains now. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. One of the great coaches said football is really a simple game. Rush theirs, protect yours. And he's talking about those guys throwing the football. In this situation, the rush one, hitting the quarterback and forcing him into an incompletion. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. Minshew sets to throw. And he's got his target. That's complete. And the pick up there the Colts have a first down and every time you step on the field coaches are always going to talk about how important tackling is in a ball game and this one especially so you can't allow these guys to break free and get extra yards after contact but that's exactly what happens here that can't continue as this game goes on so a first and ten now in Houston territory at the 43 
Up the middle, here's Taylor. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Second and seven. Looking to throw it, Minshew. He'll find a man over the middle, it's Pittman. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 28. Another good reception there. The Colts on the march. Off play action, it's Minshew. A short throw. This is caught by Cox. So the completion good for just three. And that will bring up second down. Here's Minshew. And that going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. And you just know when that play call came in, their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield, that's a lot of fun, and they missed an opportunity. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. They'll go play action here with Minshew. And that is incomplete. Blanketed coverage by Houston. Makes it fourth down. Smart move to throw that one away. You're in field goal range, so you definitely don't want to be loose with the ball. And that's great work by this defense to force a fourth down. Matt Gay now gets ready for the field goal try. Right hash mark of 42-yard attempt. And Gay knocks this one through. And the Colts hit the scoreboard first. It's 3-0. No touchdown there, but if that first drive is any indication, it looks like they're going to have a pretty good day passing the football. I would say confidence would have to be pretty high after that first drive, able to throw it almost at will. You're exactly right. They didn't get the touchdown, but three points serves as a nice notice about how this offense is going to move. team is out there now and they will send this one away and this take it in at the goal line and he will make it to the 20 yard line and no further so out come the Texans for their opening drive leading them out a two-year starter at Ohio State and second overall pick in the draft CJ Stroud I tell you what when he is on schedule for that week secondaries take notice because you've got to stay alert back there on every snap. A truly powerful arm, one that's capable of challenging any level of the defense on any given play. That's why so many scouts preach arm talent when preparing for the NFL draft. A quarterback with arm strength to make every throw in the book, he's an asset to have in any offense. Singletary to get the drive started. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two, and it brings up second down. And that's why you see a lot of teams that like to play 4-3 defense, especially against teams that run the ball really well, because you count on your defensive front, the tackles and the ends, to eat up the blocking in the offensive line and keep that guy in the middle clean so he can roam through the football and make a tackle. In this case, he introduced himself and said, Hello, my name is Mike. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. A yard in the wrong direction makes third down tougher. Third down and nine. Let's face it, that's just a helpless feeling for a running back there. He's looking up to find a hole, and all he finds is a whole lot of ticked off linebacker. Here's third and nine. Stroud looking to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. Third down is a key down in any game you play, and third down defense. 
done something we got to watch in this one. Got to be effective on the passing downs. That's a pretty good first step right there. On fourth down, here's Cameron Johnston on to punt for Houston. A deep to return is Josh Downs. Taken from just outside the 30. It'll be a 10-yard return following a punt of 45. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. Second drive coming up here for the Indianapolis Colts. They've got a 3-0 lead and the football as they start first and 10. Carry by Taylor to start the drive. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Well, that kind of run on first down, that's a winning type of a run. That just sets things up for them moving forward as they begin the drive. From the 46, here's the second and five. Again, it's Taylor. It's a pretty strong running there as he'll take this across the 50 and down to the 44. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get 10 here. Those are the types of runs they told us they want to see more of. Look, they'd love the 60 to 70 yard runs, but those 10 to 20 yarders, they can help you win a ball game. And that means everyone's invested because you know the big guys up front. That's what they do. They try and move people. But when you get your perimeter guys involved downfield, that means that they care about the running game and they know it helps their team. Three yards on the pickup there and it'll be second down. Mitch, you're gonna try and run. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. First down line at the 34 here on third down. From the gun, Minshew to throw. And that is incomplete. Blanketed coverage by Houston. Makes it fourth down. Minshew not coming off. They'll try and go for it. On fourth down, Minshew. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Colts unable to convert here on fourth down. And this Texans defense stands tall. Well, you feel the excitement build on those fourth down plays. Defense has to stay out there, but for the offense, when that thing doesn't work out, such disappointment. It can absolutely be a deflator, but how about the defensive guys? If they stop you on fourth down, they are absolutely elevated going to their bench. They're elevated now. Big stop on fourth down. So good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at the 39-yard line. They'll start this drive out on the ground. He'll take it past the 40 to the 41, second down. Brandon, you're a big lover of music. How about what you just saw there? This is what I call playing the piano for a defensive lineman, the ability to move laterally up and down the line of scrimmage. How about the way he just flowed and got to the outside part of the field and made that play? Here's a second and eight. Stroud. He'll get this out wide to Singletary. And able to use his stiff arm for a little bit of leverage before he's taken down. A pretty good game. They'll try to run for this with Singletary. And he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. 
I don't know about you, but that almost felt like old-time football there. Third and two is not necessarily just a running down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. They went back to the roots and powered forward and got the first down. Stroud to the air on first and ten. Open man is Noah Brown. It'll go as a gain of four, and it'll be second down. They'll run out of the gun with Singletary. And that one opened up for him well as he'll take this down to the 26-yard line. 15 yards, the Texans pick up the first down. Blocking at the point of attack there was very strong. He had a couple of running lanes. And I never want to overlook the offensive line, but that's what they get paid to do. How about the quarterback? Everyone thinks all he's going to do is throw the football. His movement and deception can help a running game as well. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. But you just knew that these rushers were eager to do that today. Put him on the ground. Their plan? Introduce themselves individually to this rookie quarterback. They set a load a big way there with a loss of double-digit yards on that sack. So second and long, and got to be careful not to fall out of field goal range. Here's Stroud. His throw incomplete. Well, partner guaranteed they approach this play with the idea of making up ground to make third down manageable. Unfortunately, with that incompletion, right back where they started on the last snap. Now they need a big third down play in order to pick up the yardage needed. A long way to go here on third down for the eighth play of the drive. And Stroud now to throw. and kicker Kaimi Fairbairn comes on. From the right hash, this from 53. The kick by Fairbairn is good, and that will tie us at 3-3. These kickers now used to be that a 50-plus yarder was cause for celebration, now seemingly automatic. Yeah, isn't it funny? When we prepare for a game, when you look at the backgrounds of these kickers, it's interesting, isn't it, to find out they were all-state quarterbacks, receivers, defensive backs, all-state wrestlers, right? Baseball players. We're finding athletes all along, and now they're just specialists putting it through the posts. Field goals all we've had so far. 3-3 now as the kick is away. Taken at the goal line. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. And the Colts now, they're ready to get the football back. And last time they were stopped on fourth down, had a drive stalled out. We'll see how they respond this go around. I'm eager to see what their mindset is because moving the ball, feeling good, and then that abrupt stop on fourth down, do they go back to the bench and go, oh, boy, they've got something for us? Or do they go to the bench and say, we blew it ourselves. Let's get back out there and move the ball again. And is it different when you get stopped on fourth versus punt? Is that more motivation for the defense, a little more confidence? I think as a defense, you're so excited with a fourth down stop. Making them punt, that's your goal anyway. But a fourth down stop, that's almost a sign of disrespect that they went for it in the first place. And when you get that, you feel great about yourselves. From the 25, here's second and six. Now they'll throw here, out of the gun. That's caught, it's Josh Downs. And they work this well upfield across the 45. 23 yards to pick up there.
And they'll send the tight end in motion. First and 10, Taylor now. And he goes across midfield and down into Houston territory. It's a six yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. Here now, second and four. They'll set up to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Pierce, the intended target there. And it's third and four. They'll look to throw. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. And he'll go out of bounds right around the 40. The pick up there, five yards. Now that's absolutely frustrating for a defender. Had a chance to get him on the ground before he got to the sideline. But what great vision and understanding where he is on the field as he headed for the marker and picked up the first down. Running straight ahead, Taylor. And he's going to get this down near the 30-yard line. That's good for an Indianapolis first down on a gain of 10. Three, three, a tight one after one on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Indianapolis with the homestanding Colts in possession. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Over the middle, and there's a diving catch. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. Every guy that plays this game has plenty of people around him that are concerned for his health and well-being. He had no regard for his body on that catch at all, did he? <laughs> middle of the field diving to grab it? No, he didn't. Now a first and 10 at the 11. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. This is caught. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Here's second and two now from the three. Out of the gun is Minshew. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Quarterbacking 101. Never force the ball into double coverage, especially not this close to the goal line. The windows are so tight, you just don't want to force it in there because it could be tipped up and picked off. The Colts on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. Here it's third and two. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And that's incomplete. Trying to get that one to his tight end. And they've been trying to get the ball to him, but as of yet, unable to successfully complete one. But you know, there's usually a nice comfort zone in throwing to the tight end. Great sight lines, usually right in the middle of the field. They're going to go for it now, fourth and two. Remember, they can still get the first down at the one-yard line, though. Try to punch it in with Taylor. Get in the end zone. He didn't get the first down either. They'll get neither the touchdown nor the first down. And it'll be a turnover on downs. A chance to get some momentum here in the second quarter, getting their first trip into the red zone, but unable to get it across. And if I'm the head coach, sure you feel some disappointment, maybe a little bit of deflation there because you didn't get it in, but I'm going straight to rah-rah mode. All right, guys, we didn't get it this time. It's only the second quarter. We'll be back. Let's get it later on. I want to keep this team up. I don't want them to feel like they've let everyone down. Positive. Got to be positive in this situation. It's too early to think that you don't have a chance to win this game. They'll start on the ground with Pierce, pushing through the contact, and they'll get him down right at around the 11-yard line. That one good for 10 yards, and that'll make it second and a foot or so. Okay, he didn't break that one all the way, but you got to know that he feels like he's right on the verge, and that's probably exactly what he's telling him in the huddle right now. 
So not quite out of danger just yet. Still backed up a bit, but only need a few inches here on second down. Here's a ball thrown right side and complete. And brought down, but not before reaching the 25. His first catch, good for 14 there and a first down. He's one of the bigger receivers in the game, CD, and his size that time certainly helped against double coverage. Yeah, you're still at a little bit of a disadvantage when you're going against multiple defenders when they're trying to double you and sometimes triple you. But you're exactly right with his build. He could minimize that disadvantage, and he more than held his own and hauled that one in right there. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Noah Brown, the Ohio State man, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. Throwing now is Stroud. He'll get this to Devin Singletary out of the backfield. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. It'll go as a gain of 25 on a play that started back at the 25. This one was all about clearing space for this play to work because he's going to leak out of the backfield to his right and then angle his way up the field. And a really pretty throw to put it on him and create the big play downfield. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. That's a veteran. It's Robert Woods. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. That's over 40 yards of movement with those last two plays. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Singletary, they'll go up the middle. Shreds him with a stiff arm. And a good-looking run there as he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18-yard line. 16 yards, a little deja vu from the previous play where they got 16. We often give credit to the O-line there. Two tight end formation. Those tight ends block pretty well also. Yeah, and that's one of the most dynamic positions in football now. The tight ends who can block at the line of scrimmage at the point of attack, and they can also get downfield and catch the football. Now this one to his tight end out on the right side. And he'll be out of bounds, taking it just shy of the 10 at the 11 or the 12. That was play number seven on this drive, and it got him seven yards. Here's second and three. Singletary here running out of the gun. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. Nine yards on the play there, and it'll set him up first and goal. This is a very impressive drive, especially when you consider where they started from to now be set up first and goal. Yeah, it's a nice running right there. That's what got him the first down. But at this point, I suggest open up your playbook. You can call just about what you want. Singletary will get down close to the goal line, but not in as he'll be marked down at the one. Give him two yards on that one. Second and goal now. Good work there. Holding him out on first down. And this is going to be a battle down here on the goal line. Can they hold their ground for two? Maybe even three more plays. Second and goal from the one. And they'll go play action here with Stroud. Under pressure, down he goes. Sacked at the 10. The time called here because a member of the Texans is in some discomfort. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. This has been a long drive. You gotta figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? Stroud sets up the play action. A throw out wide going to be incomplete. The Colts D sticking to their assignments, and that brings up Ford. Another good drive, Charles, but it looks like another that might end in a field goal try. They've made some nice plays. They've given themselves opportunities, but as you noted, another field goal attempt coming up, and that's not how they want to end drives. They've got to figure out what's the final touch that they need to push it across the goal line. Yeah, still yet to find the end zone. 
So we're trading first half field goals. No breakthrough on the touchdown front. We've got a 6-3 game. Yeah, and I know so many people look at a game through offensive eyes, right? They want to see how the game's played that way. You know how I'm going to view it, right? The defenses, to me, have responded well in this game. Like what I'm seeing from them, both of them hoping to keep it to field goals and not give up big touchdowns. So all field goals so far, 6-3 our score as the kick is away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. Colts taking the field again, running back Jonathan Taylor at center stage. They're behind in the first half here, CD, but it's not through any fault of their running back. He's had a strong start to this one. And you're right about that, partner, because watching him play, you would think that his team is in the lead. He has been a lot of fun in this contest. Now let's see if they can actually make something happen, put more points on the board behind his efforts. Yeah, I'm curious to see, Charles, if they can play complimentary football and get that passing game going as well. Throwing on first down is Minshew. That's going to be taken in by Downs. Down the left sideline. And finally wrestled down at the 11. A big play there on the catch and run. 63 yards. We know he's good at catching the football, but then after the catch, he's got escapability. Not only that, he's got some toughness as well because you know he's coached very hard to make sure he battles through, breaks tackles, and then they finish with, but don't fumble the football. A real field flipper there as all of a sudden they've got a first down in the red zone. From the gun, it's Taylor. Flash those fast feet, but they'll drop him at the five-yard line as he can't get any closer to the end zone. 56 yards rushing for him now to this point. From the five, second and four. Off play action, it's Minshew. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. They may be snapping the ball near the goal line, but all you're thinking defensively, keep them out of the end zone. Force the incompletion, force them into going for three and not giving up six. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. Now Minshew. He's got his running back out of the backfield. And just shy of the goal line as he's out of bounds right at the one. Give him a gain of four, able to convert, and that sets up first and goal now. Well, you have to be aware defensively that you've got two goals because obviously you're trying to prevent the touchdown, but you're also trying to keep him from getting a first down as well. That time they weren't up to the task, and it's first and goal. Taylor sidestepping his way into the end zone. It's a touchdown. Everybody in the stadium knew what they were going to do right there, CD. Three tight ends on the field, all that extra bulk, and they run it in. And you saw where that one went, right? You run it over your best blocker. I can just see the head coach right now. I want to run this one over the big boy. And they got it done. Matt Gay on for the extra point. And he's got it as the lead is now 10-6. So that drive spanned five plays. And it was capped off by a Jonathan Taylor touchdown. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. 
They've been settling quite a bit. They've been able to move the football some, but they've just been settling. That's one of the reasons they're down on the scoreboard. I love that word you picked, settling, because nowadays into, in this NFL, you're thinking touchdown almost every drive because everything's so high powered. Yeah, you'll take the field goal, but you always feel like you're leaving points out there when you don't put it in the end zone. They'll be trying to put it in the end zone here on this drive. On first down, they'll start out with Singletary. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. DeForest Buckner using that size to force his way in there and make the stop behind the line. No daylight for him to run through there, and he ran into the defensive tackle. And that guy blocks a whole lot of daylight as it is. He is truly a big man who just made a big play. Back to throw. Here's Stroud. This is caught. It's Woods. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Stroud out of the gun here. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. That's absolutely terrific technique right there by the corner. Exhibit A. Zone coverage, knew where his man was in relation to the football at all times, and made a nice play. Here's second and ten. Stroud. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. Nico Collins, the intended receiver, and it's third down. Stroud to throw it. Throw right side, taken in by Collins. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. There's another example of what defensive coaches constantly preach. Not and now hold everything here as the challenge flag is out, and we're going to get a review of that last play. Previous play is under review. The thing that they'll be looking at is a spot of the football, and uh, this is always such a tough one for officials to get exactly right. Not just because of how fast the game's going, but just trying to get the right sight line to the football, that's not always easy. We'll see what they decide here. After review of the play, the ruling on the field is reversed. So it winds up a very smart decision to throw the flag. They reset the spot, and now that's a first down. A couple of first downs on the drive already as they'll go from the 47 now on first down. And he fights forward for a modest two-yard gain, second down. When the 4-3 defense is functioning really well, you know who stays what we call clean and no one gets to him? The guy playing the middle linebacker position, the guy we call Mike. That means the defensive front is eating up all the blocks and just let him go to the football and make a play. Right back to Singletary on second down. And good work there in open space. And he's got this all the way down now to the 32. A big one there for the Texans, 18 yards. After he cleared the line of scrimmage, nice little hole developed. Yeah, yeah, great blocking right there at the start. But how about his vision, finding the open spaces and letting his feet carry him to him. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Here's Stroud. Short throw into the hands of Jordan. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. So the completion results there in nine yards. And that'll give him a short yardage situation here for second down. Play action. Here's Stroud. That's complete. It's Collins. 
And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts 12-yard line. 11 more yards there. This methodical drive continues. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Stroud looking to throw. Now throw right side here, going to be incomplete. You can tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. Now a second and 10. And Stroud now to throw. That's complete right around the eight. And he takes it inside the 10 to the eight before he's out of bounds. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. They should have got more out of that, though. He was wide open. I love how emphatic you are with that call because that's exactly what I was thinking. Wide open in the flat. Give him a ball that he can use to get upfield with, not just catch and go over the sideline. They cost themselves some yardage there. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. Now Kaimi Fairbairn out for the field goal try for the Texans. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. Fairbairn able to put this one through. And that gets him back within a single point. It's now 10 to 9. So he's been a busy man here in this first half. That's three field goals for him now. And not just three field goals, but three for three. So even though the offense has struggled a bit putting it in the end zone, he's still been able to come away with points due to his leg. now following the made field goal he'll send this one away and he'll be tackled just shy of the 25 and now Jonathan Taylor and the Colts offense retake center stage and he's well on his way to a hundred yard game he's already more than halfway there we're only in the second quarter and what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I had no idea how many yards I had. Right. Those guys have an innate <laughs> sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. Now Minshew on first and 10. He's got a man complete. And he'll have it past midfield all to the 40 before being taken down. It's a gain of 35. Able to hit on a big play right there in the two-minute drill. Now they've got a chance to use all the remaining clock and build on their lead right before halftime. So the big play gets them across midfield now for first and 10. Looking to throw it, Minshew. Out of his hands quickly to Pittman. And he'll be hauled down at about the 30-yard line. 11 yards for number 11. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. So first and 10 now from the 30. Minshew sets to throw. That one finds Pierce right side. And he will have a first down here as they get into field goal range as well, down at the 17-yard line. Charles, to move the chains that time, they had to complete it in the double coverage, and they got it done. 
And it's never easy overcoming multiple defenders, but he sure made it look simple. Found the right spot to exploit and won his one-on-two matchup. And that's caught by the tight end, Branson. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. Two yards left on second down from the nine. It'll be Minshew again. And that will be incomplete with a clock down now to 13 seconds. A good job in coverage there. They took away his top read on the play, so he went through his progressions and ended up settling on his running back who scored on their last possession. But the coverage held, it goes incomplete. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. From the gun, Minshew to throw. That'll be incomplete with nine seconds now showing on the clock. You've always been very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they've thrown it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball coming his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there, and they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Well, they finally made an adjustment there. We'll see if they can build on that stop. Gay's kick is good, and the lead grows to four. It's 13-9. Maybe a little disappointment there. They had a pretty nice drive going at the end of the half, and they have to settle for three. Well, definitely a little bit of disappointment there because when you kick a short field goal, you shake your head a little bit like, could we have done a little bit more? Could we have got one more shot to try and get six? But with what little time was left on the clock, I think it was a smart play. So six seconds, all that remains of this first half as the kick is away. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. remains is to snap this once and that'll do it for the first half of play so we've reached halftime here in a four-point game as we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports halftime report coach all right Brandon thanks very much welcome everyone to our brand new studios here in downtown Orlando and the EA Sports halftime report we saw former rushing champ Jonathan Taylor be a big time factor in that first half he wound up finding the end zone on a touchdown run to help give his guys the advantage here at the break. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter of what's been a tight contest so far. The Texans down on the scoreboard, but they do get the first crack here as we are back underway in the second half. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. So here's the Texans offense now. They get set to start this third quarter. And they do trail, but they have a chance to possess the football first to try and do something about it. And that certainly makes it something of an important drive for them because is it going to win the game? No, but you have to do something to bring some life to your sideline. In motion right, that's Collins. 
The third quarter starts with a run by Singletary. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he can even get started. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. Oftentimes when you see a running back get bunched up in the backfield, it's usually because the defensive tackle is eating up blockers for others to make the play. Not in this case. Right back to Singletary on second down. And not a whole lot there. Maybe a yard to the 27. He's definitely tough to get down. We just saw it right there. But how about what we did see? Pursuit, wrap up, and then the big finish with the tackle. They need 12 here. It's third down. Now Stroud. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Brown. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And it's pretty evident that this passing game has been frustrated so far. They haven't really moved the ball the way we might have expected, but this is a good pickup here for the first down. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Throwing now is Stroud. This will be caught once again by Brown. Yeah, he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. A couple of first downs right in succession, and this is an offense that can really use a good drive, and they're off to a fast start here. So again from the 39, this time from the other side of the field. Here's first and 10. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Quick slant here to Woods. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight yard gain, second and two. In today's football, where receivers break tackles, make people miss, <laughs> get upfield for the extra yardage, when you see a play like that where it's caught and he's dropped on the spot, that's a big time play by the defense. Here goes Stroud again. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. first down here before he goes down at the 26. It's a gain of four there and it gives him a new set of downs. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. On first down, they stick with Singletary. He'll take it inside the 25. When a drive goes this long, you have to give a lot of credit to the guys up front, those big fellows, because the offensive line is putting something together that allows them to continue to control the ball. And I know a lot of people think they get fatigued on a long drive. Actually, a lot of times the reverse happens. They actually get energized because they're controlling the ball and they're the ones dictating to the defense. On second down, here's a run with Singletary. And he's going to get this pretty close to a first down at the Colts 17. 79 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Here now, third and a yard. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And down he goes, but the stiff arm utilized effectively there. And it helps him move the sticks. Move the chains, a gain of seven on third down. You want to put together a long drive? You've got to be able to convert on third down, and they've done exactly that on this one. Sure enough, came up with another conversion right there. On the bootleg, Stroud. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And he gets halfway home from the 10 to the five on a pickup of five.
Three red zone trips have yielded just two field goals for them to this point, so they'll be searching for something more on second and goal here. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. Make it now three tackles for loss in this game, one for each quarter. And for a guy who played defense in college, I can just tell you that he's feeling very satisfied right now by what he's doing, but he's elated because he knows what he's doing is helping his team win the game right now, making some big-time plays, getting into the offensive backfield and spilling everything. Now, here's a look for the end zone, but that one's going to wind up incomplete. What an excellent defensive stand there in the red zone. Nice tight coverage. They certainly recognized how important it was to bring up fourth down here. Kaimi Fairbear now to attempt the Texan field goal. This is an easy one, 23 yarder. The kick by Fairbear is good, and that'll bring him back within a point. So they were facing the deficit coming out of the locker room at intermission, and at least they're able to get the field goal to cut into that deficit. Yeah, now your offense feels pretty good about itself, right? A little bit more up to speed coming out of the break. You turn to your defense now and say, hey, we got three there. We're chipping into the lead. Can you help us out? Hold them. Let's get the ball back for us. Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much as he's marked out officially at the 21. Here's the Colts now as they get ready for their first possession on offense of the second half. Minshew and the Colts going to come up here first and 10 at their own 21. He'll start with a give to Taylor, and he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. From the 25, here's a second down and six. Now Minshew, he'll find a man over the middle, it's Pittman. And Pittman gonna have a Colts first down as he'll get this up to the 34 yard line. Off the option, here's Taylor. And a pretty good burst there as they get this across midfield and down to the 46. That good for 19 and a first down. Parker, we always talk about how important third down is, but I think first down is equally important because everything comes off of that play. If the defense wins the down, they were able to attack. If the offense wins the down, they might go faster, do other things, and change things up. That big play right there allows this offense to really get in gear. Now a throw here to his running back. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. That's a pretty play there coming out of the backfield. But as that back, you've got to be conscious of making sure you're securing the football. When you get out in open field, sometimes you get a little loose with it as you're trying to get up ahead of steam. Make sure you keep it close to your body because those defenders are trying to punch it free. He does a nice job there protecting the ball and picking up a first down. Call it a gain of a yard, and that'll make it second down. Up the middle, here's Taylor. And not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. Seventh play of the drive upcoming here on third and six. Here's Minshew. 
And that's caught left side by Mo Ali Cox. And out of bounds right around the 20. They'll give him four yards there, and it'll be fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping him from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. So he off the tackle, and that effort gives him the first before he's brought down. They've been burned twice already on fourth down, but the third time's the charm as they keep the drive moving. Earlier, they had two other fourth down conversion attempts that did not go their way. This time, it does go their way. And this reminds me of a conversation I had with him in the offseason. There wasn't even a game to be played, but what he told me, I have enough confidence. In and he fumbled it. It's on the ground. And the Texans scoop it. There he goes, left side. So a big turn of events there. This defense makes the play. They return it for the score, and now they have the lead. So much for ball security for the offense. Playing with a lead in the second half. They give the ball up, and all of a sudden they're behind. Big time fumble. The defense more than did its job. Now the offense is summoned onto the field as he'll go for two. Following the fumble recovery, Stroud, and that is caught for the two points. So a big play there, not only the fumble return for the touchdown, then they get the two-point try. And you know, for the defense, though, they were just over there sitting on the field. They had to rush out to try to defend that. You know, it's funny. They actually practice situations that they call sudden change when the team turns it over. I guarantee you no one practices a fumble return for a touchdown like that, and now someone goes for two. Really good strategy by them putting them in that situation. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. And here again comes Gardner Minshew. He's hoping to channel his first half play. They had the lead at halftime, which play him well. Flip the script here in the third quarter a little bit. I think he misses the Pee Wee days, you know? <laughs> when you just got the orange slice yeah. at halftime, right? Yeah. And remember, weren't any real adjustments then, right? You weren't looking at some tape, right? You weren't looking at stuff off of the, the surface tablets. You just went back out and played. Right now, maybe the adjustments have caught up to him. Well, we'll see. Maybe he just needs a couple orange slices here for this drive. Minshew's throw caught by Pierce. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. Nice way to start the drive. A gain of 12 and a first down. Out of the gun is Minshew. That's going to be taken in by Downs. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. That one goes for 24 yards. I know we just saw a nice throw and catch, but how about the big guys up front they buying that time. time? Yeah, that's exactly what they did. They created time and allowed the space to happen, and it turned into a really nice play. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. He'll drop to throw. And it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. And he's certainly not a guy that drops that football very often. Indeed, because that's a bit of a surprise. I know he's in the middle of some traffic and people, bodies all around him, but he usually has the focus to haul that one in. Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and 10. Again, Menchu looking to throw. 
And this will be swung out wide for Taylor. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. to throw again. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Colts first down. They needed four. He doubled that. He wound up getting eight. They bring pressure there on third down, but this is a nice job of picking it up and making sure their guy has time to deliver the football. And they wind up getting the first down. Now Minshew on first and ten. He'll get that one to Taylor complete. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. The passing game for the Colts finding its stride. Another first down. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Some coaches like to take the shorter, more reliable yardage, and some, they like to go for the big shot. No fear in risking a deep ball there, but it wasn't enough to get them the completion. Second and 10. They'll try the left side with Taylor. Oh, nice move. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. They'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. I think that's about as good a three-yard run as you're going to see. And he actually did it with a little bit of flair, didn't he? An eight-play drive to this point. So here's play number nine on third and seven. Minshew sets to throw. That's to the pylon and incomplete. But that was certainly an aggressive call and an aggressive play. Instead of just going for the first down, took the shot in the end zone, went for the touchdown. And on third down, they said, forget about the sticks. We want six. One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert. And they turn it over. The Colts unable to convert here on fourth down. And this 10-play drive winds up yielding nothing. Well, that's the fourth time that they've tried to go for it on fourth down. They've only converted once, Charles. And obviously not a good percentage. And if you're going to go for it on fourth down, you think that you've got the right play dialed up. You can't be stopped. Your momentum's going to keep going. But one for four, that tells you that you need to look at things in a different way and you need to tip your cap to the defense. They've done a great job. On the handoff, it's Singletary. And just not a ton of room to work with. He'll get it to the 15 for a gain of two. Yeah, that one was relatively easy to see. I noticed that from up here. Yeah, it doesn't take a whole lot, does it? Sometimes you get multiples. What I always love on these offsides is when each side points at the other. Hey, you <laughs> did it. No, you did it. They deciphered that one correctly. A boost here to start the drive. After the penalty, it's first and five. On the give, this is Singletary. And the big boys up front, they're going to stop him right at the line. No gain there on first and five, and it leaves him with a more standard second down. He may be a bit undersized compared to the modern-day NFL defensive tackle, but what he lacks in size, he definitely makes up for in his ability to make tackles in the run game as well. Stroud to throw it. He's got his man. That's Woods on the out route. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Yeah. 
A give, Singletary right side. And he'll push his way forward to about the 32. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Stroud out of the gun here. This ball tipped, and it's going to be incomplete. Fortunate maybe to get that back. It's third down. Really nice play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball, but for the guys on the offensive line, they're doing a nice job of trying to protect their passer. But when a guy hops in the air and goes airborne to try and knock one away, it's difficult because you can't reach out and grab him. That'll be a holding penalty. So all you're trying to do is make some type of a play on him, make some type of contact to try and get his arms out of the sky. Give him a gain of five on the completion. And that's going to make it fourth down. If it's for baseball, we'd call this small ball. Instead of pushing it downfield, they throw a short pass trying to pick up the first down. But the defense rallies to the football and stops him short, bringing up a fourth down. On is the punter, Johnston now, as he sends this one away. Taking it about the 16. It'll be a 44-yard punt. The return goes for eight. And out will come the offense as they take over. Here comes the Colts offense now as they make their way onto the field. A kind of a lucky break on the prior drive, Charles. The turnover on downs that the offense had didn't come back to bite them after the other side, their defense came through, was able to hold them without any points. I would agree with you, partner. A little bit of a lucky break indeed, but you know what they'd say to us. No luck, just pure skill. We rose to the challenge, and we didn't permit a score. That's how we roll. Well, I'm kind of curious, Charles, if they might temper their aggressiveness now offensively if they get in that fourth down spot again. Yeah, one would think so, but maybe because they held them, they might go for it again. 94 yards rushing for them now to this point. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Looking to throw it, Minshew. Throw left side, complete. That's Taylor. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Now what a first down pickup of eight. The defense was ready for the back to leak out and even had a second player waiting to double him up. If you're going to commit to doubling a back, you better prevent a completion, but give him credit. Extra determination, extra effort, turn it into a successful play. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Second down at six now from the 42. From the gun, Minshew to throw. Quick slant caught by Pierce. Yeah, that's good for a gain of six. And it'll leave them with third and a full yard to go. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays harder to move it. They'll try and pick it up by running the action to the right. And he is going to have a coach first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I do know that owners, when they watch their quarterbacks run with the football, they usually hold their breath because that's the franchise. But when you're getting that kind of a game, hard to argue against calling it. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and ten. They give to Taylor out of the gun. And he'll be taken down right around the 41-yard line. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Now back to throw. Connecting over the middle of Downs. It'll be a pickup of four. Good enough to earn him yet another first down. Out 
the gun. They'll look to throw. Oh, what a heck of an effort there as he'll make the diving catch. Another good reception there. The Colts on the march. I like the design that we're seeing right there. This is what they need. Down by a touchdown here in the fourth. They just need to keep working their way downfield. And when they see openings, take their shots. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Minshew's going to keep it himself. And they'll work this down to the 15 for a pickup of four. Now a second and six. They'll look to throw here. He's going to be sacked back at the 23-yard line. That was Will Anderson getting home and finishing the play. And another long drive from the offense, but the defense is denying them the end zone. Nothing to show for the last drive offensively. They can't come away empty-handed again. The Colts on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This is third and 14. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. This a 40-yard attempt from the left hash. And Gay knocks this one through. And that'll bring him back within four. So an interesting call there to take the three. I mean, I guess they're thinking that their hands were tied, but you know, fourth quarter, that field goal might not help them that much in the end. Yeah, eventually they're going to need the touchdown. The thinking must have been they didn't feel confident about picking it up there. Hoping maybe on defense they can get better field position, get a turnover, get a better play, and then they'll have a chance to attack the end zone. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21. And here comes the Texans now. Right now clinging to a one-score lead, Charles, and I think operating within that four-minute offense with a little less than four minutes to go applies here, right? It certainly does, and that means the playbook is still wide open. But you are a little bit more careful about what you're calling. You want plays they are going to gain yardage how would you say it? Consistently, mm -hmm. right? You don't need the big shots downfield, but make sure the clock continues to run. Pile up the first downs. And the goal, end the game with your quarterback kneeling down at the end, and you still have the lead. To the 22-yard line. Brandon, you know how many times we've done games, and at the start of the fourth quarter, we see both teams hold up the four fingers, four quarters, hours. Well, how about this drive? You saw the four fingers for four-minute offense, and this offensive line has really hunkered down and established themselves. Now, this is where they say, put the game on our shoulders, we'll lead the way, right? No doubt about it. And let me tell you, if you're a running back, all you want to do is get behind those big fellas, have a little vision, and find some space. And a solid way to do that on the first play of the drive there. one so far. This is third and three. And Stroud now to throw. Short throw into the hands of Jordan. And he gets this up to the 34 out of bounds there. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? That's so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or takeaway. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. That gives him 98 yards in this game, and he's going to feel pretty good about that, but the entire offense does. The big thing, though, Brandon, they've got to get to 100, though. You think he knows he's at 98? I think someone has told him by now, and here's the thing. 
Getting to 100 or more is tangible evidence that you've had a nice day running the football, and that's what his offensive line wants for him and for themselves. Five points of contact necessary at this stage as they'll run on first down. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. So they come up on second down, and they can get another run like we just saw. Would likely put an end to this thing. They go right back to Singletary. And he's taken down inside the 30. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. They'll run here with Singletary. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. Now the Colts will use their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Give this to Singletary running right. They get him to the ground right on the cusp of the red zone after a pickup of five or six. You can really tell right now both sides have amped up the aggressiveness. That time the offense winning the aggression battle. And the defense was obviously aiming for the football, maybe a little bit more so than the runner himself. And that's why he was able to break through and get the gain that he did. Stroud looks to throw. Touchdown, and in the final minute, that should just about seal it. They have to love seeing that from their young quarterback here in the fourth quarter, able to further that lead with a touchdown pass. He didn't go turtle, did he? And you know what I mean by that. I had an old coach used to say all the time, hey, when we have a lead late, don't just tuck in and try and ride it out. Go out and play and extend the lead. And that's what he did. Fairbairn good with the extra point, and that pushes the lead up to 11. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. And he won't quite make it to the 25. So Minshew and the Colts now, down by 11, 55 seconds remaining. It's an extremely tall order in front of them, but they've got the ball with a first down. Now Minshew. Finding Pittman. And they work this well up field across the 45. This is first and 10. Minshew. This one incomplete. So the clock stopped now with 20 seconds remaining. Well, it's pretty difficult to sum it up offense in a two-minute drill. When your guys have struggled to put points on the board all afternoon, there's an incompletion right there. They'll come up now on second down. 
Here's Minshew. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. Got a man, it's caught inside the 10. But Charles, we were treated to an excellent game today, capped off by that second half comeback. This was a joy to watch. Entertaining for us, not so much to the team who led at halftime, and now is leaving here, knowing that they let a win slip through their fingers. Tough one for them to carry home. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaunt. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we say so long from Indy.